bad enough we had to come back to this rotting heap. Now we're expected to look to our neighbors for help. Just got to learn some self-reliance. That's all we need. That's all we've ever needed. Just wish the others would listen. Well, hello, you bearded bastards, and welcome back once again to Ailgarau, Red Vault, where things are going pretty well, actually. Remember, the traitors just arrived, led by their outpost liaison, Aunga, and so we were just about ready to do some trading, hoping to get a good deal, too. Now, Sinx Bawar, our doctor slash broker, is going to be the one doing the trading. Remember that Far, our current expedition leader, is not a fan of trading at all. Doesn't much like outsiders which honestly is a bit foolish of the guy. We have to trade. It's not even an option. That being said, let's get straight to it. They have some things I'd really like to get my hands on. Expedition leader, the outpost liaison has arrived and would like to speak with you. Greetings once again, Martians. I see your settlement hasn't fallen yet. That's really something. Anyways, we brought some stuff you'll be interested in. I hope you've produced something useful this time. Ah, uh, but first it looks like Aunga, the outpost liaison, wants to have a meeting with Far. Fair enough. Let's get it out of the way. Looks like they have some news for us, and we have to make some requests for next year too. Well, seeing as how they did bring some, uh, pets for us this year, I think we should ask for more. I wasn't too sure how reliable they'd be with that. And so, eh, let's see. Like, we know light missile walkers are useful, right? So, I'm thinking a heavy walker would be very useful. Yeah, let's go with that. We'll request a heavy walker, as well as... How about a moss dragon, too? Not too terribly sure what that is, but... Couldn't hurt, right? Well, I suppose it could, but... Yeah, what the hell. Yeah, send us over some dragons. I'd also like a variety of leather, too. Artificial leather is fine. Uh, how about some rubber, as well? Some cloth, a couple different kinds. Yes, yes, this all looks good. And now let's see what they'll trade for for next year. Well, uh, looks like a bracelets are a much sought after item. Okay, it seems bizarre, but maybe the Martians of the homeland are in need of uh, such niceties. Yeah, blocks and musical instruments are still up there, but they're not worth all that much. Looks like now they want windows, uh, crystal glass goblets, fish. Not going to be able to provide much of this except for bracelets. We can do that. Bracelets, absolutely. Feeling a little salty because they're in need of such mundane items, but it'll certainly help us out if we can trade such mundane things. We'll start producing them ASAP. Now then, we can get down to some actual trading. Wonderful. Okay, let's see. What do we have? We don't have much to trade for, I guess, right? Just gonna be trading a bunch of tattered clothing and concrete blocks. Damn it. Yeah, that's not gonna get us very much at all, unfortunately. But, eh, I suppose we can get something for it. Oh, but actually, well, we have these grade C nanotechnia blocks. I still don't know where these came from, right? I, I uh, discovered that we had them last episode, but these appear to trade for a decent amount. I'd like to keep our hands on some, but, well, maybe we could make some, uh, make some use of this. Yeah, we'll trade that, as with the rest of these blocks, and uh, we'll see what we can get for that. Well, I do have some light missile walkers, but, well, they're not as expensive as I thought they might be, but they're still considerably expensive. We'll see what else we can get first. Well, they got grade C nanotechni bars. We'll take that. We'll also take some more cheese. That was a pretty big hit last year. Some synth meat. Good stuff. Oh, is that in the same category as cheese? Yeah, it looks to be. Ugh, nice. Yeah, we'll take some fish. Oysters, cone jellies, basketball jelly. I don't know what any of this stuff is, but couldn't hurt, right? Really, they don't appear to have brought all that much when you get down to it. Well, maybe we can get a light missile walker. Let's try anyways. Oh, crap. Yeah, it worked. Hell yeah. That X seems pleased with the trading. Wonderful. Okay, got ourselves a light missile walker, some weird cheese, and some other crazy crap. I'm happy. They're happy. Good deal. Well, these concrete blocks are better than nothing, I guess. We'll try to get your heavy walkers, and we'll see about those dragons. You just make sure to have some bracelets ready. Have a good one. Yes, quite. Until next year. Ah, yes. Feels good. It does. Despite Far's dislike for trading, we did get some very nice things. Uh, okay, here. One second. Let's have a look at the news we received. See if we got anything good. Okay, the flashing X, that is Red Vault. 
Now having a look around, just have some item locations here. Nothing too interesting. Then over this way here, looks like some group reclaimed this place. I don't care that much. And then up over this way, there's that new Martian settlement that we heard about last year. Seems to be coming along. Other than that though, I'm not seeing a whole heck of a lot. Just the same old crap. Well, that's fine. Best to have a look, right? Never know. Now then, what I wanna do is have a quick look at what we have in the area. During that whole beginning part right there, I don't know if you noticed it, but we had a bunch of annoying stuff darting around. Preta, those things were trying to get in, steal stuff from the depot. Oh, then we also have that visitor, can't forget that. We have a bunch of half men and half women, some sort of mutant. But then we have that hemorrhage thing, remember that? Uh, let's have a look at that, because I think it's a threat. Here we can see it, out here. Uh, it's, it's quick, very quick. It appears to be coming over towards our settlement, then running away. Kind of like a Garuda sort of a thing. I don't really want to get too close. Oh, looks we have gotten beaten up there, actually. Well, that's good. Maybe it's not as tough as it seems. All right, let's have a closer look before the thing dies. A hemorrhage. It does appear to be similar to that Garuda or several of the other creatures that we've seen. This thing here has evolved to prey on the weak and also remove higher learning from the world. That's really creepy, but I guess doing so has helped to evolve. A hemorrhage resembles a crocodilian with a human face and a long tapered neck. Its jaw opens to the back of its neck. It is covered with bands of nanotechny armor in place of scales. That is something. Yeah, I'm not sure if we got lucky uh, getting it beaten up like that. I don't know how big it is. It doesn't seem like a small creature, that's for sure. Gonna have to try to avoid it. Maybe it'll go off and die somewhere. That'd be nice. Get out of here, you bastard. Well, and you know, we just had a look at that thing and there's, a, there's really an awful lot more I'd like to have a look at too. But there's so much to look at, so much. Man, I could spend all episode just looking at new things, but that would take forever. We'll keep pecking away at it. Uh, but that being said, I, <laughs> I did notice this. Uh, Erisu Yingo Zampuru, Noble Spearman. Gotta have a look at that, right? Let's have a quick look, it's a visitor. And they appear to be down in our meeting hall right now. I have a feeling they're a warrior just like uh, that Rock Shasta from last episode. Yeah, let's, uh, let's have a closer look. A noble is a human subtype resulting from a rigorous genetic program that has granted them great intelligence but low strength. They were designed by the Great Solar Empire to administer to the Eastern Hemisphere of the home planet, but with its fall have ascended to a position of prominence despite their bureaucratic origins. Low strength and a weakened immune system. And yet they've come as a warrior. Not sure how well they'll do compared to our Rakshasa friend, but I mean, who knows? Maybe this guy's more skilled than he seems. Shouldn't write him off completely. But you know what? Hard stop right there. We've spent far too long just looking at things, okay? We have to buckle down and actually get something done. Red Vault's controlled by far now. We have to remember that. So no more monkey business. If we want to be self-reliant, we need guns. We need a way to defend ourselves. That's going to be very important. Especially when we have things like the hemorrhage walking around out there. Or even those Preta. And so, yes, guns. We just got that grade C nanotechny. I believe we could do something with that. So let's give it a try. Just down over this way here in the southwestern corner of Red Vault, we can see the workshops. And this is where our forge is going to go. All right, well, I can choose to make things out of a whole variety of different metals and nanotechny, but if I do, nothing comes up. Hmm. Okay, well, just for the hell of it, let's make a smelter next to this forge. I suppose before we make anything out of that nanotechny, we should learn how to make more. Having a look here, we can make a grade C nanotechny. It requires bars, which we have, as well as corroded metal. So one nanotechny bar can make two, as long as we have corroded metal. And fuel, for that matter. And we're gonna need a lot of fuel, which we are getting right under control. We have four Martians down in the caves right now, cutting down some of those uh, glowing mushrooms. Gonna get a lot of wood real quickly. Gonna start turning it into charcoal. Fuel. Alert. Green. One. Migrants have arrived. Oh, well, looks like we have some more migrants. Wonderful, welcome, come on in. We'll get you to work shortly. More hands should hopefully make this thing smoother. Up to 49 people now. Not too bad. Uh, but yes, back down here to our forge and smelter. You know, I just looked it up, and I don't know why I thought grade C nanotechny was the one we wanted. It's not. That's like one of the lowest grade ones, if not the lowest grade one. You can't make weapons out of it. That's why we couldn't. But you can make weapons out of grade M, which I think we have. We might even have grade A. I'm not 100%, but it looks like we might. That's what we want. Alert. Yellow. Three. Combat detected. Danger. Oh, but uh, hold up here just for a second. I know we're supposed to be getting down to business, but we have a bit of a conflict down here in the caves. Looks like one of the Martians out collecting wood has run into an abominable woman. Which I've seen before up on the surface, but they haven't been much of a problem. However, it is a creature we were warned about when we first embarked here, if you remember. Let's have a look. I, I think this is going to be a problem. 
This is an abominable woman. A feral mutant, just like those, uh, the Preta or the Thin people or whatever. This one resembles a massive hairless humanoid with a wide, sharp toothed mouth, clawed digits, and large eyes. Fair enough, not something we're gonna want to mess around with. I don't know how big it is, but, well, best thing we could do right now is just turn on our burrow and hope that this machinist can run away. Oh, not looking good, not looking good. A couple people caught up in that, actually. Three people were just beaten badly. One killed. Hey, but then this abominable thing was killed. Handily, too. And you happen to see who did it? It was Zetar, the Rakshasa swordsman. Excellent. Already helping us out a bit, though it didn't help with those Martians who were killed, unfortunately. I think there were at least two. Well, at least the creature's gone now. But yes, anyways, back to work. Guns, focus. Over here, you can see our growing stockpile of glowing mushroom wood. We have quite a bit now. And down below this area, you can see our wood furnaces. Plenty of fuel soon to come. Which is great because we just got done reworking this workshop down here, and it looks to be good to go. Uh, mmm, oh, maybe not. Well, I was gonna have these guys try to start making a grade A nanotechni, which we do have some, but maybe not enough? Confusion. Uh, okay, grade A requires grade C nanotechni bars, and grade C we can make. Okay, well, I guess we'll try that then. Okay, this seems to be working. Excellent. Well, we're going to leave them to it, wait till we get a lot of grade C, and then we'll start pumping out grade A. And then we can start making guns. Almost there, Martians, almost there. Patience. In the meantime, it looks like we have another petition for the creative key. It's a craftsman guild. Yeah, we can improve that, definitely. In fact, I was anticipating this, so I've already made a guild hall right over here. Get some tables in there, chairs, put some nice windows in, that'd be great. I know I was talking about that before, and I had suggested possibly making our own windows. But, well, if you look down right over here, you can see this large, strange-looking deposit. This over here is crystalline glass, which I believe we could turn into windows. Like, just as it is, just cut it up a bit, and easy enough. And I know that doesn't seem like so much, but if you look over here, there's actually a lot of it, and we're gonna mine it all out right now. It'd be a great efficient way to get a bunch of glass. Just like this. Yep, you can see the windows going in right now, and we're slowly gonna be installing them all around Red Vault. Pretty excited to see how that comes out. In the meantime, down over here, we've been making some grade A nanotechni, and now we have a fair bit of it. Warning, warning, red, full. Large organism detected. Inbound. The forgotten beast Yolo has come. An enormous feathered leech. It has an enormous shell and it has a gaunt appearance. Its tan feathers are long and sparse. Beware its poisonous sting. See, that's not great. We were just talking about finally producing some guns and then this thing shows up. Not much we could do about it, I'm afraid. The only safe thing I could think to do is just to get all our Martians into the burrow and try to wall up the caves before it can get in. We don't have an option. Just gonna have to really hope everyone can get in on time. Let's go you fools, come on run. There we go. And now we gotta wall it up. Two shakes. And there we go. Okay, yeah, it stinks. Can't go out in the caves anymore, but at least we can get back to work somewhat. Now we just have to get ourselves armed and have that thing dealt with. Let's see. What we're going to do is make a uh, grade A nanotechni. Mm, looking for a rail gun of some variety. Rail rifle? Sounds good to me. Yeah, we'll take the scoped ones. And yeah, we'll start off by making a few of those. But, okay, we've run into another problem as well, because we need ammo if we're going to shoot at that thing. And for that, we need energetic compound. You can make it by smelting down a whole bunch of things. But one of the most effective resources you can smelt down to get this stuff is the circuitry. Remember this? If you smelt this stuff down, you can get a lot of that energetic compound, which we need. We can't go out in the caves and mine it out, that wouldn't be safe. But we could easily mine out behind these deposits. Just got to be careful not to break through. Yeah, I think that'll work out pretty well. We'll have a stab at it. Having a look back upstairs here, you can see we do have several of those guns made. Nearly 10. As a side note, you can see our new Craftsman's Guild. All completed. Looking very good too. Nice windows, take note. Oh, hey yeah. Uh, looks like we got some new migrants here. Always good. Come on in and let's see what we're working with. Oh boy, crap. That's a, that's a big, big group. Up to 68 people now. That's gonna cause problems. We've been so focused on other things, uh, food and drink has gone neglected. Yeah, not, not looking too great on that front. Uh, that being said, we just made the transition over to this farm area here, remember this? So we do have some new farm plots going, just waiting for production to pick up a bit. It has a ways to go still, but 
Yeah, we should be fine. I'll keep you updated. Anyways, if we have a look down here at our circuitry deposit, you can see it's all mined out now. And we actually have a few Martians collecting it. Gonna try to get it closer to Red Vault. Won't be difficult. Okay, and here we go. One of our furnace operators heading over to smelt down this circuitry. Should be good to go shortly. Just give him a moment. Ah, yes, and here we go. Energetic compound bars. And we should be able to turn these into some proper bullets now. And we'll make some mm, penetrator rods. Make a whole bunch of them too. We're gonna need a lot. We're gonna have to streamline this whole process, I think. We're gonna be doing an awful lot of shooting. And now that we have guns and ammo in production, we should worry about our military. All we have right now is this Water Seeker Militia. And you know what? I think we're going to keep the name too. I mean, hell, we haven't even seen water yet. More on that in a bit. But yes, that's gonna be our squad. And I'd like to make a new uniform for them. Something we can customize as we go. We'll call it the Sniper, sure, why not? And we're just going to include uh, scoped rail rifles. And well, you know, I guess that's it. And now then we have to choose some people for the squad. We'll make Plam the new security captain. They've got the makings of greatness, I believe. And under them, we're just gonna, well, we're, we'll stick a bunch of the new guys. There we go. 10 Martians in our new squad, the Water Seekers. And now I believe we're all set. So with any luck, our squad will have found their way to our new barracks. Yes, that's right, we built a barracks right out here in the main compound. Also, please take note of the migrant wave that just passed. We have some new Martians. But anyways, yes, our barracks. If we have a look up, you can see it right here. Zooming in a bit, here you can see the second level of our outdoor compound. Pretty simple, rectangular. It's just the top of the wall. It's an enclosed fortification that we can shoot out of. And then down here in the bottom left, right over our entryway is the barracks. They can come in here to do a little bit of a target practice. You can see we've got a bunch of archery targets set up for them. Should work out good if they ever come in here. We'll see what happens. Actually, right now we have a problem where we don't have enough quivers for everyone. We'll need some leather for that. And actually, having a look at the date, we just entered late summer. So we're approaching fall again, which is excellent for so many reasons. This was a very fast year. We got a lot done though, huh? Yeah, we need leather for quivers. And uh, actually, a lot, lot, lot more important than that. Uh, we need drinks. A lot of drinks and food. Actually, we need... A lot of drinks and food, desperate need of drinks and food, especially considering that last microwave that just came in. That brought our number up to 75, and our farm is not doing great. I'm not too sure what the, what the big deal is there, but it's not going well at all. Actually, pretty damn afraid these guys are going to start dying. I wish we can get some access to water, but we still have not seen a single drop anywhere in the area. Not down in the caves, not buried underground, nowhere to be seen. Yes, but as worrying as that all is, we have to keep our minds off it for now because we don't have any options. We just have to try to produce more plants and hope that when those traders come, they've brought a lot of drinks. We need some help here. In other news, uh, oh, <laughs> well, that's something. Looking down here in the caves, we could see that that forgotten beast has been killed. Huh, wasn't much to it, I guess. Kind of sucks we didn't get to see it actually happen. But if we have a look at the combat log here, it looks like a light cannon drone took the thing down. I guess. I, I still really have no idea what happened here. From what I could see, this cannon drone fired a couple times. Uh, didn't really make any hits. Hit it once in the shell and bruised it. But then it died. I guess that's all it took, huh? Well, that's good. I'm gonna say that's good, actually. Except for the fact that we now have cannon drones out there that can kill forgotten beasts. Might still be a bit dangerous out there, I suppose. But, eh, that's fine. We need more fuel. Let's get out there. Uh, but yes, in other news, over here we have Far once more carrying a boulder. Far here is no longer our expedition leader. He's no longer needed in that capacity. Because recently our population has grown to the point where we've elected a site manager. And that is Util Inakyak. A newer face, one we're not familiar with. But, I mean, well, Martians voted for her, so she must have something good going on, right? She doesn't have a lot of friends in the fortress. But one thing she does have going for her is she personally really respects commerce and those that engage in trade. And she's also very greedy, too. My goodness, so we've gone from being totally self-reliant to devilishly shrewd Martian traders. Fantastic. Yeah, also unlike Far, she does not tend to hold on to grievances and does not easily hate or develop negative feelings. Oh, and is slow to anger too. Okay. She seems to care more than Charo did, but also be a lot more mellow than Far. This here is something we needed, definitely. Although, gonna have to hope she doesn't die soon, I suppose. Red Vault's dehydration problem is, well, it's a real problem. Right now, Util is panicked because she's dehydrated. Just gonna have to hold on a while longer, Martians. The traders are almost here. We'll get drinks before long. Red Vault will be just fine. 
And before we finish up here, we have a little mission for the Water Seekers. You can see they're over here on top of the walls right now. And that's because we have some more Preta down here, trying to make off with our stuff. The rat bastards. Well, let's see how we do. <laughs> okay. All right. Yep. Not even a modest attempt to start like shooting them or anything. Just gonna run down and bayonet the heck out of them. Well, it seems to be working anyways. Yep. And, uh, and yeah, problem dealt with. Okay. In my defense, the fortified walkway does have a ceiling on it, so they didn't just jump out the ceiling, but the barracks does not have a ceiling on it, so they went to the barracks, climbed out of the barracks, jumped down over the walls, and proceeded to club the Preda to death with their guns. No casualties this time, though. Worked out pretty pretty well. Already in a better place. Good job, Red Vault. Just gonna have to work on uh, everything a bit. And on that note, we're going to say goodbye to Red Vault for now. It's in a pretty bad place and things can go downhill very quickly if we don't get those drinks in time. So yeah, I suppose this is another bit of a, a little bit of a cliffhanger. <laughs> It'll be fine though. Or will it be? Well, right now I'm going to start talking about some behind the scenes things. And I'm sure the big one a lot of people are wondering about is whether or not this series will continue. Well, cliffhanger like that, you should darn well hope it does. And it is. Yes, I got a poll up on my Patreon, and it was nearly unanimous. Our trip through the long night shall continue for four more episodes, too. I think I said I was going to do two more when I first started this whole thing, but yeah, we're going to do four more, keep in even month. So look forward to that if you're enjoying it so far. I think it's good, too. We're just starting to come around now, or possibly starting to crank downhill at a violent pace time will tell and at least we'll get to find out next episode eh that'll be fun but uh yes uh let's see what did we see this episode well we made guns and fiddled around with nanotechnia a bit i still don't know why i was thinking grade c nanotechnia was the one we wanted it's strange just a little slip of the mind i suppose but yes in the long night you get nanotechnia and you can use it well you can combine it with other resources and make more nanotechnia and then to continue on and get higher grades you need to use lower grades first yeah, then there's that whole energetic compound thing too with that circuitry. You can get that from all sorts of stuff, but you just get a lot of it from circuitry specifically. It really helps change things up a bit. I mean, like really when you get down to it, we haven't seen all too much in Long Night that's much different than just normal Dwarf Fortress. Beyond just the uh, like the different creatures and items and stuff. But this whole system here, this is vastly different than normal Dwarf Fortress. And I feel it's helping to draw me into this unique world a bit. Uh, another thing too, people have asked about this too, actually in my previous videos too, people have asked about it, but like, I remember I had, I had one comment this past episode, where someone want just like slow paced stuff, you know, like look in little slice of life of the Martians or dwarves in most cases, and I gotta say, I, I really want that too, but more often than not, there's not much to tell, you know, like, It'd be cool to look in on Far and, you know, just see what he's up to for the day. What's he got going on? Who's he talking to? But usually it's not much and no one, you know, like someone like Far specifically. He's got no friends. He's friends with Aunga, but it's not like you can pop in and see what they're talking about in any great detail. As for work, most of the time they're just carrying around stuff or like he was a concretist. So for a good portion of this past year, he was just making rock bracelets or corroded metal bracelets. Uh, as for food, you know, he's eating the plants that we grow. We haven't even been cooking them. We've had to use a good deal of them brewing, so didn't want to cook them. But yeah, not much else to say. I try to note things where I can, but you know, there seems to be this illusion that I could go in and focus on a single soul for an entire episode and just keep it really, you know, slow and just focus on the one person. But it'd be boring as heck unless something happened to them, which in most cases doesn't. Far didn't do anything this entire episode. He just made bracelets and carried rocks around, <laughs> ate mushrooms and uh, soybeans, and didn't talk to anybody. That was his entire year. But that being said, I really would like to do something with that. You know, the whole concept of slowing things down and taking a, a look at things. But much like in real life, I think Red Vault has been far too busy to even consider something like that quite yet. Anytime any of the Martians have had any free time at all, they've had to spend it sleeping or eating or drinking. There's been no downtime so far. 
But I suspect if things keep going at this pace, like this episode, I think we started with 40 something Martians and now we're up to 75, I think. So yeah, by episode eight, I'm thinking things should be slow enough where we could actually uh, have some downtime. It's bound to be like that in a new settlement like this, right? There's a lot of work to do, no downtime. And hopefully by the time the dust settles, we can really dig our fingers in and get to know them a little better. At least at that point, we'll know what they've been through to get to that point. So right now we're just priming ourselves for that in my mind. Of course, if things never slow down, then we'll never get that chance. So <laughs> we'll play it by ear, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to take this opportunity once again to thank the fan artists who have sent in pieces. Thank you very, very much. I always enjoy seeing what you come out with and everyone else here does too. I can guarantee that much. You guys are the best. And you out there watching at home, you're pretty darn great too. Thank you for joining me today. And I certainly hope to see you next time, my friend. Here in Elgarau, Red Vault. And until then, you bearded bastards.